Here at Genio, we pride ourselves in every step of the roasting journey. We're going to take you through a variety of key words that is the terminology that brings this all together. It's the foundation and the basis of what we believe in and where we feel we are going as a company. Hang on and enjoy the ride. Mmm, beautiful. Green coffee is basically the seed of the cafeo fruit. And what we always want to ensure, when we receive it from that supplier, we know that it's between 10 and 12% and we store it correctly. We want to try use it within 18 months. Communicate with your supplier, ensure that he knows and you understand the importance of your green coffee. Moisture content is monitored on the farm and when it gets to a specific point, they will then bag the coffee. If you bag the coffee too soon, you're going to end up with rot or mold within the actual bag. So ultimately, you're looking at anything between 9 and 12%. And if that moisture content is within that range, it will impact your roast positively. If it's too high, you're going to battle to break down all that moisture within the roast. And if it gets too low, it means your coffee is aged. This will impact the roasting process. Evaporation is a combination of a part of the first phase as well as natural evaporation that will take place within the environment you're storing the coffee. So evaporation can take place in two different aspects, in the sense of a naturally in the bag within your environment as well as within the first phase. We can't control this natural evaporation, it's where the coffee is moving from a liquid state into a gaseous state. I would not advise you store your beans in a sunny room because of the natural heat and humidity that would build up on the coffee and that will impact actual evaporation process and speed it up. Incorrect storage of green coffee would ultimately impact the coffee negatively whether it's a wet environment which will obviously then create potential mold but if it's a very very dry environment you will obviously naturally decrease the coffee. It will speed up that moisture content release. The endothermic reaction takes place naturally of the build up of energy in the drum. This energy gets stored within the beans and then from that endothermic reaction will happen obviously the exothermic reaction where now the beans start to expel that energy that it's built up within itself. Ideally at the end of endothermic is where we want to start slowing down the roast before the bean goes exothermic where it starts to expel that energy now that it's built up. We want to control that and that's where our ROR comes into play. We want to use that exothermic energy but we want to use it positively. Heat transfer, there's two types, there's conductive and convection. Conductive is the actual heat that is coming off the side of the drum that is heating up the actual beam, and we can control that with a combination of charge temperature, the flame that's on the drum, and the revolutions that the drum is turning at. Convection energy is the transfer and the process of the heat within the drum that goes into the beams. When you drop the beans out into the cooling tray, it's important we have the agitator on and as well as the cooling of the, the fan. It's important to help slow down the roasting process and end the roasting process because as it still drops out, there's still that natural energy within the beans. So the cooling process is to make sure that we stop that roasting process as quickly as we can. Screen size is vitally important to the roasting process and will help you determine what you should charge at and the energy that you're going to put throughout your roast. The way screen size is measured and when we buy screen size as roasters, it's measured through circular holes that they drop the beans through. Certain beans will be labeled on a bag, for example, 12 slash 13. That's measured in one of 64th of an inch in diameter. On your bag, if it says 1718, you know it's a screen 1718, which is quite a big bean. And having a smaller screen size will absorb energy a lot faster, so which means you're gonna to need to watch your roast closer, and a larger screen size would take a lot longer. It's very important that you factor in those things when you roast your coffee, because if you don't, you could potentially lose control of your roast, if not bake your roast. 
With having multiple screen sizes within a roast, you're gonna get a lot of inconsistency throughout that roast. So you're gonna find that you're gonna end up with lighter beans, darker beans. It's gonna make it far more difficult to get a desirable, consistent roast profile. Rate of rise is the temperature that is measured that the bean goes through in increments of 30 seconds. We want it to be controlled within the roasting environment and we do want it to go down gradually because we don't want to crash or a stagnate or a flick. The rate of rise is a great indicator as to how quickly we're taking on energy. Development time and percentage ultimately gives you the outcome of what the bean's gonna taste like, the complexity, and measuring that is very important because we're looking for a specific percentage. What's important there is it gives us a platform where we get traceability and we're able to then do that over and over again consistently. So focusing on development time or percentage gives us consistency at the end of our roast. Drum speed is the revolution that the drum is turning over the heat. It would impact conduction heat more than convection, purely because it's the conductive energy that we're building up with the contact of the beans on the side of the drum. In terms of drum speed, if we select the wrong drum speed, especially if it's too fast, we're not gonna get sufficient contact to build up energy that's gonna build up within the inside of the bean. It's not gonna allow us to get us through the drying phase to give us sufficient energy on the edge of the bean. Having a slower drum speed could potentially end up in scorching and tipping, which we don't want. Increasing and decreasing airflow is a massive part to the roasting process. We need to control the airflow, which allows us to build up the natural energy within the drum and by releasing that helps us control the roasting process from beginning to end. Airflow determines how fast we draw energy into the bean and how we control the roasting process. A rate of rise crash is a major drop off on the rate of rise. So after first crack, the rate of rise begins to drop and we need to control that to ensure the roast doesn't go too fast. So a stagnating rate of rise is a problem because if it does stagnate and doesn't drop off naturally, we're going to end up baking our coffee and getting an undesirable taste. Bean temperature is measured within the drum with a probe that gives us the actual temperature of the bean at the rate it is climbing. It's an important part of the roast graph because our roast is determined by bean temperature as well as roast time. One of the most important things during your roasting process is to watch your bean temperature because that will impact your overall roast. Without a bean temperature sensor, you won't be able to achieve the correct roast and monitor your roast to determine the roast profile you're looking for. Environmental temperature will help you determine how much energy you've got inside the drum and how you can use that energy to your advantage. The first phase in roasting is vitally important to the process of roasting. You need to allow the beans to naturally dry during that phase, choosing the correct charge temperature, choosing the correct airflow from the beginning. At a certain point, the bean will go from the greenish brownish color into yellowing, and then we know we're coming out of the drying phase into the maillard phase. During the Maillard phase, we are experiencing a, a numerous things that are happening within the roast and within the bean itself. We are starting to develop aroma compounds, flavor compounds, as well as the body within the coffee. The interaction between the acids and the sugars that are taking place, and this is where we can actually build up the beautiful flavors that we are looking for. So during the Maillard reaction, it will turn from yellowing maybe to a cinnamon-like color before it goes through into the browning phase of coffee. Caramelization or the browning phase of coffee will be the final phase. We come to come to that phase into exothermic where we get the first crack of coffee. This will help us to caramelize those sugars to get the complexity that we are looking for the coffee and the final bit of flavor development as well as finish. So going into second crack would determine the fact that we are looking for a slightly darker, maybe an Italian or a French roast. We're moving out from breaking down all that sugar into bryolysis. So roast time is a combination of all three phases coming together and it's the total time that we are roasting the coffee. The combination of roast time and bean temperature will give us our final roast profile, which at the end of the day will give us exactly what we're looking for to get the best out of the coffee.